Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about The Rights of Woman by the absolute badass 18th century French feminist Olympia de Gouge. So some of you may know, uh, the French Revolution was so extreme and so radical that it led Edmund Burke, the English political philosopher, to develop the idea of conservatism as a political philosophy. They, like, conservatism was invented because of the French Revolution. The French Revolution, uh, the French revolutionaries looked at Olympia de Gouges and they were like, pump the brakes, playa. And by pump the brakes, playa, I, of course, mean they cut her head off with the guillotine in 1793. She was so... <coughs> She was so extreme from the position of the French revolutionaries themselves, probably among the most extreme people on the planet at that point, or at least in uh, Europe and the Western Hemisphere, that the French revolutionaries were like, whoa, time for you to die. And so the thing is, the rights of woman, uh, the, 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 the piece from de Gouge that I'm going to talk about in this episode, Basically, it starts from the same principles as the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, which was passed by the French National Assembly, the revolutionary government of France, to declare the principles of the revolution and to establish um, equality before the law, basically. But it specifically was for men. De Gouges comes along and she's like, this is some bullshit. Here is my version where I, where I assert women's rights. So what's cool about this, um, like the Declaration of Sentiments from the Seneca Falls Convention, which was written about 50-some years later, de Gouge picks up on a founding document of the French Republic, uh, which is the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen, and she uses that as the foundation for pushing for women's rights in the same way that the Declaration of Sentiments picks up on the U.S. Declaration of Independence in order to push for women's suffrage and women's rights in the mid-19th century. De Gouge does the same kind of thing with uh, the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. But de Gouge goes further. Uh, this is like... This is like late 60s, 70s, second wave feminist type rhetoric that she's using in a lot of places here. Um, so she starts the, the sort of preamble to the rights of woman says, man, are you capable of being just? It is a woman who asks you this question. You will not deprive her at least of this right. Tell me what gives you the supreme authority to oppress my sex, your strength, your talents that she's calling out patriarchy and she's doing it again in this very like 60s 70s second wave feminist type way like there this is a direct i am woman hear me roar type rhetoric and she's doing it in the 1790s early 1790s um but she's also making this claim on women's rights and equality under the principles of the revolution, right? Because part of the thing that the French Revolution intends to do, <coughs> sorry, is establish, is establish liberty, uh, egalité, fraternity. Basically, equality and mutual support, a political community of the citizens of France. Um, what de Gouges is doing is claiming membership in that community. Um, so she says, so actually that's the sort of preface bit uh, before we actually get to the preamble, because the preamble says, is, is actually addressed to women. Um, it says, mothers, daughters, sisters, representatives of the nation demand to be constituted into a national assembly, considering that ignorance, forgetfulness, or 
or contempt of the rights of the woman are the sole causes of public miseries, and the corruption of governments have resolved to set forth in a solemn declaration the natural, inalienable, and sacred rights of the woman, in order that this de declaration, <coughs> sorry, being ever present to all members of the social body, may unceasingly remind them of their rights and duties, in order that the acts of the power of women and those of the power of men may at each moment be compared with the aim of all political institutions and thereby be more respected in order that the demands of women citizens hence, henceforth founded on simple and incontestable principles may always turn to maintaining the constitution, good mores, and the happiness of all. In consequence, the sex superior in beauty as in courage, in maternal sufferings, recognizes and declares in the presence and under the auspices of the supreme being the following rights of the woman and of the woman citizen. This is a direct rewriting of the preamble to the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. Again, like the Declaration of Sentiments at the Seneca Falls Convention, de Gouge is clearly pointing out here is a limitation of the founding document of this republic. This, this republic, the French Republic in this case, has failed to live up to its fundamental principles, fundamental ambitions about what liberty and equality and maybe less brotherhood, but in the sort of larger sense of the figurative brotherhood of humanity, maybe. Brotherhood is a gendered term, and I'm going to ignore that for the moment. But the Republic of France, according to de Gouges, has failed to live up to the principles of liberty and equality that are enshrined in the fundamental uh, precepts of the revolution. And so the inclusion of women as full members within the body politic <coughs> is the way that you move toward fulfilling those principles. And from there, she goes on to um, basically, again, rewrite each of the, the, the statements, each of the principles from the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen in order to incorporate women into the political community. So, in the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, the first principle is men are born and remain free and equal in rights. Social distinctions can be based only upon public utility. De Gouges rewrites this Woman is born free and remains equal to man in rights. Social distinctions can be based only upon common utility. Again, this is very direct rewriting of a document that the French people, at least the literate French people and many illiterate French people who would have had this declaration read to them, that people would be very, very familiar with. And she is using the ideology of... Um, political liberalism from people like John Locke, um, Rousseau, uh, Montesquieu, people like this, who lay the foundations of the idea of govern government by the consent of the governed, individual rights and liberties, etc., etc. De Gouges is using those ideas <coughs> to justify her feminist aspirations for the French Revolution. Um, and we see that, again, with a lot of these rewritings of things. Like um, number six here, it says, it starts out, law must be the expression of the general will. I talked about this in my video about the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. The, the idea of the general will is rooted in the political philosophy of Rousseau. But then she goes on, all women and male citizens must take part personally or through their representatives in its formation. And she goes on more. But this idea that you can't have an expression of the general will if roughly 50% of the population is excluded from that conception of the general will. This is a, a fundamental feminist argument, and de Gouge, again, is making it in, in the early 1790s. Um, she goes on through a number of things. She deals with the same kinds of rights that the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen deals with. Um, she makes the arguments essentially that, again, these are crucial things that the French Republic cannot forego 
if it wants to live up to its promises of equality and justice. And there's one more point that I want to want to excerpt for you. Um, this is this is from point ten. She's and it it's unfortunately an ironic point. She says, woman has the right to mount the scaffold. She must also have the right to take to the rostrum. So basically, this means because women can be executed by the revolutionary government, the corollary of that is that they must also have the right to speak in public. De Gouge did both. Um, I mean, she published, she wrote, she was a, a playwright, she was a pamphleteer, she uh, ran salons in which ideas were debated, etc., etc., but she was also executed by the revolutionary government for her ideas. So, <clears throat> I mean, her life bears out that principle. Her life and death bear out that principle. Um, the last thing I want to I want to read you from this is a bit from the postamble, because again, we get we we end with this sort of second wave feminist, uh, really really stark rhetoric of liberation. Um, so at the beginning of the the postamble. <coughs> she says, women, rouse yourself. The tolling of the bell of reason can be heard throughout the universe. Recognize your rights. Nature's mighty empire is no longer encircled by prejudices, fanaticism, superstition, and lies. Truth's flaming torch has dispelled all clouds of foolishness and usurpation. I love that idea. I, I wish that that were true. I wish that uh, reason and truth had, in fact, dispelled clouds of superstition and prejudice, but yeah. but that idea, like, I love that idea because, again, it is this, it is this very rabble-rousing, second-wave feminist, let's, uh, let's march in the streets, let's burn our bras, time for direct political action type rhetoric, but it's also reflecting the ideological currency of the day, which was Enlightenment era thought, this rational worldview that you go beyond superstition, you go beyond religious prejudice, you go beyond these things that limit humanity's freedom of thought, and you get to a better world. Now, the other thing that I think is cool about de Gouge um, and this is peripheral to de Gouge in a way, but there's a philosopher named Jacques Ranciere, um, who's, a, who's a contemporary French philosopher. He has an essay in which he talks about women like de Gouge who were um, denied their rights under the French revolutionary government and protested, took to the streets, wrote pamphlets, um, made speeches, etc., etc., demanding their rights. And the, the thing that Ranciere says that I think is so interesting is that through these demonstrations of political engagement, these women who were ostensibly denied their rights proved that they in fact had them, proved that they, could, they were, that the, the, critiques that women were not capable of political action, not capable of being full members of the body politic, was disproven by the very fact that women were engaged in political action. And for Ranciere, what he argues is that politics as such involves identifying what voices are not heard in the current system and creating spaces for those voices. So de Gouge is definitely doing that. She's engaged in proper political action, as far as Ranciere is concerned, because she is saying, this is a voice, this is a constituency, a demographic, <coughs> whose voice is not represented in the current state of affairs. I am going to demand and I'm going to create that space through action, through actually enacting political engagement.